Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Marta Ylilauri. I work at the University of Vasa within research, development, and education concerning green care and care farming as a part of green care. And today, this webinar concerns care farming, especially in the Netherlands. I had the great opportunity to visit some care farms uh, in the Netherlands last spring, and uh, that's inspired us to also give this webinar because uh, it's one of the great examples in Europe how to, how to work with care farming. And this webinar is a part of Nordic NAPS, New Nordic Nature-Based Service Models Project. And it's a part of webinar series that continues during the whole project. At first, uh, I present a little bit about the contents of the webinar. Uh, we go quickly through the background and short history of care farming. And uh, most of my references are from the Netherlands as a subject of this webinar today. And then we go through uh, the motivations for care farming. What are the benefits of contact with nature and farming? Then I introduce you to the development process of care farming in the Netherlands and then to the Dutch care farming organization models. Then we have a short interview, Hilly Faber from Foundation Land. And at the end, I give you the references and literature combined to this subject. And if you have some questions, uh, or want to discuss about this, uh, we can uh, continue with the discussion on our Facebook site, or you can send me an email. A short history of care farming. Well, uh, human species, we have had these uh, agricultural activities for about 10,000 years. And from the beginning, the practices, they have served human needs and preferences, which have varied then what other crops we need or other things we want to cultivate. Then in the Middle Ages, for instance, hospitals, monasteries, churches and prisons, they have all had their gardens for food production. In some cases, they have had medicinal herbs and they have had their therapeutic spaces as well as uh, animals and they all have been a natural part of the daily activities everyday life and care and these earlier stages of care farming they have been based on the acknowledgement and experiences uh, people have realized that the contact with nature and taking care of animals and also plants it's very important to human beings in many ways And the background for care farming comes also from the agricultural industrialization and green revolution in the 20th century, because that, those both have dramatically changed agricultural activities. Uh, this intensive agriculture, it focuses largely on the maximization of production and profit. Also, abandonment of the countryside in traditionally agricultural rural areas. And then the amount of smaller farms and rural societies have decreased dramatically because of the urbanization. And this disconnection with agroecosystems and ecosystem services from rural areas has increased in Western and urbanized societies. And then the valuable and important relationship between humans and nature has been overlooked during these recent decades. And all this transition in agriculture have had several impacts in the latest decades, such as loss of agricultural landscapes, increased negative environmental impacts, 
or with all these fertilizers and other chemicals. Loss of genetic heritage related to local varieties and breeds. Also cultural impacts like loss of local knowledge and identity linked to agriculture. And also to our history in that way. And all these negative effects to our general nutrition. What do we eat? How processed is the food? Do we know where the food comes from? Also the health relationships, both with nature, with other people and the animals and the quality of life. And all these together has, has aroused interest to a smaller scale with social farming, care farming. Then why care farming? What are the benefits of contact with nature and animals? Well, there's a lots of research in different kinds of effects and effectiveness of nature elements or animal assisted interventions. And this research has activated in various research fields at the 20th and 21st century. And now there is a growing body of evidence on the positive relationship with wind exposure to nature and animals in different settings and human health and well-being. Uh, all these vari various positive effects on well-being can be with physical, psychological, social and spiritual benefits. Uh, Contact with nature improves psychological health by reducing pre-existing stress levels, enhancing mood and attention, offering a restorative environment, and importantly, offering a protective effect and resilience of future, st future stresses also. And contact with nature also improves physical health and social well-being through because it encourages physical exercise we go out we go out to the forests we go uh, go and work with animals and we don't even recognize the physical exercise we get it's also facilitating social contacts maybe sometimes with animals but also with other people we work for instance in care farms it's a very important part of that and also providing opportunities for personal development, depending on the needs for each client. And this, this list serves well, if you want to put to a nutshell, what are the functions of multifunctional service providers like care farms? Uh, it offers, for instance, peacefulness. We don't have the traffic noise or we, we just get the rural peacefulness when we go to the farm, for instance, or to a nature. And feeling of space, which we all many times lack when we live in urban areas, and uh, natural life cycles. It's important that we know that in summer everything's growing, and then the autumn comes and we can enjoy the crop. And then the winter, when it, for, na for the nature, it's time to rest. It also shows us people this diversity of the meaning of seasons. It also offers diverse sense perceptions. We hear, we see, we smell, we taste, we touch. So it's it's very one-sided effect. And it offers real work. It's very concrete. You know that these animals need to be watered. These, uh, these animals need food. These plants must be watered. And of course, working together, have the peer support. Many people are lonely and uh, they don't have these uh, regular contacts with other people. They don't 
belong to uh, to a group and these care farms they they can give you the sense of belonging and the tasks they vary during the winter and uh, in summertime it's totally different so it varies a lot in the farm you get these structures routines things to be done every day also uh, a touch to a normal life and taking care of, of the animals each for most for many client groups it's a very important part of care farming because animal has this uh, advantage to take the contact with people in different ways that other people do also the physical exercise it comes as a side effect and you have the chance to take a part to outdoor activities get out from the house get the fresh air and so on and the effects according to many research and also the experiences effects are for instance uh, measured to stress recovery physical activation promotion of physical health social interaction and involvement personal development it can be psychological it can be can have something to do with learning or self-esteem and the social skills you learn to work together with a group in a group for instance you learn to communicate and then one of the effects is uh, identity based on health and other resources that you you learn that you can you can and you have these abilities you maybe didn't recognize before you came to the care form and of course that has a effect to self esteem it also enhances responsibility for instance, some uh, so-called problem youth come to the farm or horse stable and they got a task to take care of the animal. And it might be the first time in your whole life that you really want to take responsibility of something, something that it also concerns the others, not just me and myself. Okay, then. What are the characteristic features for care farming? You can say that care farming is a multifunctional agriculture, and it means that it's innovative practice that combines agricultural production with health and social services. And the clients, they're called participants. And they are involved in agricultural production and they are as valuable as the farmers and the other participants. Care farms can offer, for instance, daycare. It can be involved with supported workplaces, residential places for clients with different kinds of disabilities. The main thing is that the activities, they are empowerment oriented and strength based concerning each participative participative client and these can be called place-based interventions in agricultural settings and there then the practices they are utilized to provide, provide care for vulnerable groups so that the client becomes an active participant and the whole thing it can be seen as a part of wider shift from institutional and medicalized care to socialized and community care. Then what, what can be the challenges for care farmers? One thing is that care farmers face the challenge of connecting the gap between agriculture and health or social care organizations because many times there have been 
it has been a long development process that they are totally separate from each other. So it's, it's going to need some extra work in the beginning. And when a farmer is producing social and healthcare services, they are confronting with many kinds of register regulations. And the farmers also face the challenge of acquiring new customers, new partners may be needed, and also financial resources from the care sector. And this many times needs more promotion and new financial options. But however, when you combine the care services with the farming, it also can give some added value to the farmers because they are often criticized about farming subsidies, negative environmental impacts. So this can be something positive that farmers can do in their area, in their communities, in their municipalities. Then, especially in Netherlands, what are the main features for care farming? At first, Netherlands is absolutely one of the care farming pioneer countries in Europe. And care farming services are both nationally and regionally organized and available to various, various kind of client groups. Uh, in the Netherlands, care farming is mainly provided by private farms, private family farms. And uh, it's often so that uh, it's promoted as an additional source of farm income. This farm I visited last March, they had about 50% of income from the food production and other 50% from the social farming. But of course it varies a lot. But all these care farms are very good examples of agricultural diversification called multifunctional agriculture. Uh, in the beginning, in the Netherlands, one of the goal, main goals for, for these care farming activities was to enable the client's integration into the society and active participation in, in it. Shortly, get them a better quality of life. And the first clients in Netherlands, they were people with disabilities and mental health clients. But nowadays, also other client groups are involved in care farms. For instance, the, the elderly, clients with dementia, children and youth from the social services, clients with substance abuse, and people with long-term unemployment. Uh, care farms are typically located near cities and clients so that and the transportation is uh, often arranged by the farmer sometimes by the volunteers who wants to be involved in care farming in their area and the clients called participators comes from the municipalities or from other local, regional, national, or private institutions. And they also get private participators, usually from the same area. And I must say compared to, for instance, to Finland, the role of volunteers is very crucial. And then if we go back on time to, to 1995, then were the first personal budgets, budgets introduced in the Netherlands. And a few years later, they were the, it was enlarged the ability to use the personal budget to several client groups. But nowadays, it's more or less replaced by contracts with the municipalities and regional organizations. And the funding can, comes, for instance, from the national insurance company called AVBZ, from municipalities, for instance, according to law of social support, and other national or provincial care budgets combined to use labor integration and so on. And there are also 
private participators paid by their own healthcare insurance or paid by themselves or their families. And sometimes you can get also get uh, financial support from funds and grants. All these services are regularly documented and uh, the documentation varies from daily documentation to longer reports a few times a year. And also qualitative research has been conducted based on interviews. Uh, when we look at the development process of care farming in the Netherlands, we go back to the 1970s uh, when this modern care farming development started and it continued and reached the amount of approximately 1,200 care farms today. It has varied a bit on the, during the decades. But uh, Netherlands is one of the leading countries in the amount of Greek care farms, but also uh, as the intensity and experiences documented about it. Uh, both Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Social and Healthcare shared the interest of combining this farming and social services. And it was, it was very important for the critical breakthrough that happened in the 1998, when the first national meeting was arranged. And after the meeting, the national organization was established with participants in all the crucial sectors. And that's important that you have all these uh, actors in this process. And it's also said that it, is, it has been very important to connect the politi political decision-making process to the care farming. Then, after the meeting, came the National Support Center of Agriculture and Care, and this uh, organization was established in 1999 for developing and supporting care farms, developing the quality system, uh, and also embedding agriculture and care in society and policy, uh, enhancing information, and spreading experience and knowledge nationally. Uh, they also produced a website a national database, a quality system, and a handbook for starting care farmers. So important job done then. But the organization stopped, it, stopped it, its activities in December 2008 because the government subsidies were closed down. It came to the point that uh, government thought that it's important that it continues without government subsidies and the sector was pressed by the ministries to establish a national association that would rep represent care farming sector as a as a whole and is financed by care farmers themselves as a result of that the federation of agriculture and care called federati lambo and zori was established for national coordination, including, uh, for instance, collecting and spreading information, coordinating quality management, and promoting care farming in a national level. Then the quality certificate, it was, um, it was published by the National Support Center of agriculture and care together with the other stakeholders uh, as early as um, in 2002. But when, when the organization's action stopped, the management and development of the quality certificate was handed over to the Federati Lambo and Zori in December 200, uh, 2010. And this Dutch quality system for care farming that ensures the professional and high quality care. It ensures that professional and high quality care is provided on care farms. 
and it makes the care offered verifiable and transparent, which is very important. So that the client knows that the farm is a safe place, the farmers work with the clear agreements, and the client's personal development is the highest goal of, of the services, not, for instance, food production. And it's also important that everyone can come and have a look because of the care farmers, they are proud of what they do. And it's, it's, it can be open and transparent because the quality level is high. Uh, and the workbook concerning care farming, it consists a list of topics where the care farmer must be, describe how they have been uh, realized all these topics and also the standards that must be fulfilled. I can refer this to uh, the Green Care Handbook in Finland. And after working with the quality system for a year in the Netherlands, the quality must be tested in practice and assessed by an independent assessor via the Federation of Agriculture and Care. And if the test result is positive, the farm receives the certificate. And it's going to be tested again every three years. And nowadays, over 700 care farms have their quality system tested, and over 600 farms has received the certificate. And after that, uh, an annual report is required. Each year, you have to check these things again so that you can hold on with the quality standard. And something about the fees, excluding VAT, the registration fee is 300 euros. And then the annual, annual report check is about 100 euros. And then the test assessment, which is made each three, uh, third year, costs about 700 euros. And to participate the, the quality system, the care farmer must be affiliated with one of the regional member organizations of the Federation of Agricultural and Care. And so, then something about the development process. Because of the activities of the National Support Center were closed down, the role of regional organization has become very important. And today there is 12 regional care farming organizations in the Netherlands and this one national organization. And after the reform of social and healthcare service structure in 2015, as the responsibility of organizing the services, social and healthcare services, it has been transferred from regional organizations to municipalities. So it's like totally different development curve than, for instance, in Finland. And uh, today, all these municipalities, they can have different kind of requirements and agreements, which concern also care farming. Uh, then we had this possibility to uh, interview one of these uh, regional organizations in last spring. And our example in this webinar is uh, Foundation Landside. And uh, it's a central counter for agriculture, care and welfare in the northern part of the Netherlands, quite near Amsterdam. And this organization, it helps together with the farmers to make the vital countryside accessible, everyone, and to give people a full place in society. Uh, this is the main task. And Landside so supports people with disabilities by ensuring that they find a pleasant and suitable place with care farmers. Uh, Foundation Landside has about 110 care farmers as members. And the finance, financing is arranged the way that uh, Foundation pays about 80% of its income to the farmers and keeps 20% for its own activities, including all these services the farmers need, like ad advising, quality management, interviews, 
client evaluation and also education. Uh, all these care farms that are affiliated with Landside get support with bureaucracy. This is very important that the farmers, they can concentrate on the real work at the farm with their clients. They don't have to struggle with, the, with all these contracts and invoicing so that Landside makes all the contracts with the municipalities or other uh, client organizations, ins insurance companies, and the foundation is also responsible for the quality management and documentation for the care farmers so that uh, they only they only report of their doings and the uh, foundation is doing all this bureaucracy concerning the uh, documentation about the activities so it spares a lot of time for the care farmers to concentrate on their important work at the farm and these services are free for the farmers because of the payment comes from the other other ways uh, via the invoicing from the land side. Uh, the foundation also offers different kind of shorter education for the farmers, as well as meetings with, with other farmers like four times a year. And this is important because you work alone and you struggle maybe with uh, some problems and it's very important that you can meet your peers then and discuss about it and uh, uh, get new ideas and share your thoughts, experiences with, with your colleagues. So that's important. Today, there are about 22 professionals working in the foundation with different, different expertise. So you, as a farmer, you can take contact to regional organization, ask for help, ask for guidance and so on. So it's very, very important. Then we have the short interview uh, of Hilly Farber. Uh, she's the chairman of the board in Foundation Landside. And we met in Ostorp in uh, one of the care farms or uh, care gardens near Amsterdam. So please listen to this interview and then we can continue with the webinar. Uh, Landside is the organization who makes the contracts with the government, with the uh, uh, insurance companies, with colleague institutions. Uh, so the people on the farm don't have to worry about how to get the money and how to get clients. So that's our part in uh, the system. And on the farm, uh, they work the, um, as co-workers. So they are not clients, but they are co-workers from our farmers. And our farmers uh, sent uh, uh, to Landseide, and we uh, do the administration with all the governments and uh, colleague companies and insurance companies, and we pay our farmers. And so we also take the risk, uh, because we pay our farmers immediately. They send us the bill and we pay them. In a lot of times, it's you have to wait a, uh, a lot of time before you get the, the money from all the other uh, partners. But that's the risk Landside is taking. So it's nice for the farmer that he don't have to worry about it. He can focus on uh, giving the people a good aid. And that's uh, what we are doing. Let's let people work and uh, make them uh, have a good aid. Uh, I have picked some references and literature for these lists. So if you're interested, if you have time, it's, it might be a good idea to read these uh, publications, articles, or, or check the websites. For instance, um, the website of uh, Federati Lanbo and Zori, it's there is a lot of information concerning care farming in the in the Netherlands. Uh, there are the farms and how they are located, uh, linked to the handbook and so on. So, if you have the possibility to check it out, so it's 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 very interesting.
mainly these references are from from the Netherlands. Jan Hassink has been one of the main writers of these articles, and and we also had a possibility to interview Jan when we visited the Netherlands. Then more information about care farming, but also green care and our project, which is uh, aiming to create these new Nordic nature-based service models. So please visit our Facebook site and our project website, and also our YouTube channel, all these webinars, presentations, and the videos from the entrepreneurs, which are going to be worked in the website in the future. And then we send the newsletter twice a year. So please join to the post, li post list if you're interested. And please contact us if you have something to ask concerning this webinar, or if you want to talk about your, your own uh, green care or care farming uh, service model, or want to participate on our workshops or something else concerning this subject. So please contact us. We work in Lapland, Northern Ostrobotnia, Central Ostrobotnia and Westerbotten and Norrbotten in Sweden. Thank you for listening. And hopefully you got some new ideas and some new information which helps you to to develop your own work concerning care farming. Thank you.